So now we are going to discuss the relationship between inflation and unemployment. Now, one of the things I want us to recognize is that you see, when an economy reaches full employment, as in when a, an economy uses all its resources it has and cannot increase output again, it means that the economy has reached full employment. Now, when that happens, okay, it is likely to lead to inflation because when demand or aggregate demand increases, supply cannot increase too much. Up. Supply will remain constant because of full employment. Supply cannot increase. So that is likely to what? lead to inflation, all right? Because there is lack of spare capacity for us to produce more, even though demand has increased. So it's going to lead to inflation. On the other hand, whenever there is high unemployment, inflationary pressures will be subdued as a result of slack in the labor market and therefore wage, reduced wage pressures. So here, what I want you to understand is that in periods of inflation, okay, real wages are going to fall. Remember, nominal wages may seem big, but if you deflate nominal wages by inflation, you realize that the real wages are going to fall. That is why in periods of inflation, people or people, uh, I mean, most labor unions embark on labor actions. The reason is that they want government to increase their salary to match up with the increase in general price level, okay? So what happens is that once there is an increase in general price level, although your nominal wages are quite good, you realize that your real wages are falling because your purchasing power that you can get from the wage is not like before. When the, it's not like before the prices increase, okay? So then what it means is that whenever there is inflation, real wages are going to fall. And once real wages fall, it means that labor is going to become cheap. And once labor becomes cheap, it means that employers are going to employ more labor. Okay, let me take it again. When inflation increases, real wages are going to fall. Once real wages fall, it means that labor becomes less expensive. Once labor becomes less expensive, employers are going to demand more labor. And once they demand more labor, it will solve the problem of what? Unemployment. So this simply means that when we are talking about inflation, we cannot ignore the issue of unemployment. Now, if we are following what I was saying, that means that the higher the inflation, the lesser the unemployment. So if inflation goes up, you realize that unemployment is going to reduce because real wages will become cheap. And once real wages become cheap, people are going to employ more. And once people employ more, once people employ more, what is going to happen is that it will reduce unemployment. So that is the, what we call the Phillips curve. This curve was actually propounded by an economist called Phillips. So that's why we call it the Phillips curve, all right? That's why we call it the Phillips curve. It shows the relationship between inflation and unemployment. Now, in the past, Government, when they realize that when there is an increase in inflation, it will lead to a reduction in unemployment. What most governments were doing was that they were employing expansionary and, I'm sorry, expansionary fiscal and monetary policy. They were employing both expansionary fiscal and monetary policy so that there will be inflation. And once there inflation, there's inflation, they know that the problem of unemployment is going to be solved. But it got to a point in time when that 
economists realized that that policy by government was not working. That policy was actually leading to more unemployment. What was the reason? So when that happened, the monetarist economists began to question this care, which was propounded by the Keynesian economists. Okay, the monetarist economists began to question the Phillips curve and said that this Phillips, this Phillips curve actually occurs in the short run. But in the long run, what it means is that you see. In the long run, when many labor unions realize that their, lay, um, their real wage has decreased, what they are going to do is that they are going to bargain for increase in wage by embarking on industrial action such as um, lock ins, lock out, um, strike, you know, sit downs. Like they will come to work, they will not work, they will be sitting down. Or in order. So in the long run, labor unions are going to bargain for increase in wages. Now, when these labor unions bargain for increase in wages, okay, what it will mean is that it will offset the initial fall in real wage. Because listen, real wage fell because of inflation. Now, government is saying, that, okay, I know your real wage has fallen. You've gone on strike. You've done lock in, lock out, sit downs, etc. So I'm going to increase your wages so that it will compensate for the inflation. Okay. So once government increases wages, or once government increases what we call the minimum wage, okay, what then it will mean is that labor will now become expensive again. Labor is going to become expensive again once government increases real wages. Now, when labor becomes expensive again, it means that the employers are also not going to employ more when labor becomes expensive. And even they may also want to even shed off existing labor. And that will also lead to what? Unemployment again. So the Phillips cap is as good as the short run. But in the long run, the traditional Phillips curve will not work. So let's look at the Phillips curve in the long run. Let's assume that this is the initial level of unemployment, okay? And government increases taxes. So let's assume that government increases taxes Now, let's assume that we are at unemployment um, unemployment here, okay? Now, if government wants to reduce unemployment, government can bring expansionary monetary policy and, and expansionary fiscal policy so that aggregate demand will rise over aggregate supply and then the prices will rise, okay? So once government does that, inflation is going to increase from 0% to 5%. And once inflation increases from 0% to 5%, what it will mean is that unemployment will fall from U star to U1. And then inflation will increase from zero to 5%, okay? Now, over time, over time, over time, labor unions are going to argue that because of inflation, their real wage has fallen. What is the implication? The implication is that government is going to now increase their wages so that it will compensate or it will offset the initial loss in wages because of inflation. And when that happens, it will further lead to unemployment. So the unemployment moves back. So it moves back to U star, but now the inflation is what? 5%. So unemployment moves back. Because government has increased wages, it means that employers will not employ more or, or they will even shed off the current employment that they have. So unemployment will move back even though price has risen by 5%. Now, when government sees that government may also want to correct the inflation in the long, in the short term again, and also bring in policies that will increase price by another 5%, so from 5 to 10%. So when that happens, again, the inflation will be 10%, but we will move 
back or you reduce unemployment to you one. Okay. But again, these people are still going to bargain for higher wages, which will lead to another unemployment again. So then, as 10% inflation, we will still go back to unemployment of you staff. So at the end of the day, this will be the final outcome. And if you join this final outcome, you, you see the long run Phillips curve. The long run Phillips curve shows that any attempt to increase inflation will not reduce unemployment. It will not reduce unemployment. In fact, it will lead to the same level of unemployment or sometimes can even lead to a higher level of unemployment. That is a long run Phillips curve. So that is why it is vertical like this. Okay. All right. So Philip, the original Phillips curve is as good as short run. In the long run, it will change, it will not hold. Okay. Now, based on this, we cannot ignore the role of expectation. The role of expectation is very important because you see. When people expect that prices are going to rise next year, okay, they will begin to negotiate with the government that next year also increase our wages by 5%, which will compensate for the loss in what? Real wages. So then when people expect prices to rise, they will also bargain the exact amount of percentage for their wages to also rise. So when this happens, in fact, inflation will not lead to loss in unemployment or reduction in unemployment. Inflation would lead to the same level of unemployment when people are bargaining for government to increase their wages. All right. But even with expectations, we have adaptive expectations and then we have rational expectations. Adaptive expectations assumes that since prices rose by 5% last year, this year to or next year to, sorry, since prices rose by 5% this year, maybe next year to, it will increase by 5%. So let's bargain for 5% increase next year. All right. That is adaptive expectations. But you see, for rational expectations, people are going to incorporate other factors. They are not simply going to assume that a rise in inflation of 5% this year means next year to increase by 5%. They will incorporate all available information. Okay, They are going to incorporate all available information and even predict that prices are even going to rise like maybe 9% because of rational expectations. But whether adaptive expectation or rational expectations, it will make labor unions bargain okay, for an increase in wage. And this will lead to unemployment. And this will make the original short run Phillips curve useless as explained before, okay, as explained before. Okay, so this would bring us to the end of um, the introduction to the Phillips curve.